is. Uh, I promised y'all a while back I was going to make a video of upgrading the cooling system on this car. This car still got the original radiator uh, from the factory. It just came with the regular radiator, no fan shroud. It did not have heavy duty cooling and it didn't have air conditioning. So it didn't have a fan shroud. The problem that I'm running into is it's overheating. Like uh, when I'm sitting with just the car idling, especially in the summertime. So it, it didn't come with a very big radiator. I'm sure it's smaller, it had a 283 and it probably worked good back in its time. It maybe stopped up, I don't know. I'm sure it doesn't work as good as it did originally. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drain the coolant, disconnect all the hoses and everything to the radiator. I have uh, obtained parts from different people on Facebook. Uh, that's about the best place that I found to get parts when you join a group that's uh, dedicated specifically for 65 and Palace. And there's people on there that have cars that they're taking apart. But anyway, I found it to be a great source for parts. So in order to change this car over to heavy duty cooling, I bought an upgraded radiator, and I'll show you the parts in a minute. And I bought a fan shroud from a car that had heavy duty cooling. And I bought a narrower uh, radiator mountain bracket, this piece here. On the cars that didn't have the shroud, they had a wider bracket, so I was able to find that, like I said, thanks to Facebook, the, group, the Impala groups. And I recommend that to anybody if you need any parts. Get on there and ask people if they have them, and you can a lot of times find these hard to get parts. All right, these are the new parts that I've got to put on there. Uh, this is a fan that I've already had, but I bought a new... Uh, I bought a new clutch for it. I bought that from Rock Auto. Uh, the original fan didn't have a clutch on it and they say this one works a lot better, keeps your car cooler or makes it run at the right temperature. Also keeps it warmer in the winter to, by the clutch on the fan that works from temperature. Uh, also got a new thermostat gasket. I got some more uh, coolant. got a new thermostat. I bought one that's supposedly better than the one I got in there. I got new hoses for cars with air conditioning. Uh, I believe that's going to be the right length for what I'm doing now. And I got a new radiator. It's a copper radiator made by US Radiator and it's an upgraded from the original style fins. This is the fins that uh, from what I was reading that were uh, the design was created by the Japanese in the 80s and all American cars went to it later. So it's supposed to be an upgraded style of uh, radiator from the original. And U.S. Radiator ma makes these when you order them. I also have a new radiator cap from Stamp. Here's the fan shroud that I bought. I was able to get it from somebody. At, I'm not aware of anybody that reproduces this right now that's exactly like this. And here's the spacer that I was telling you about. You can see it's much narrower than the original. The original is four or five inches wide. I also forgot to mention the, the very first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery cables from the battery. That way we don't have any issues. There shouldn't be any issues with this job but it's better to be safe. Alright so to drain the radiator uh, what I do is go down here underneath the radiator and I put me a, I, I'm going to reuse my coolant because it's not very old and you just go up under here and loosen up the drain valve and start draining it into a whatever container you want It'll take a few minutes, it shouldn't take too terribly long. And it 
drains a lot faster if you take the cap off the top. I just did that. And we have to disconnect the upward and lower radiator hose. And my car is an automatic, so you also need to disconnect the two automatic transmission lines. And you're going to lose a little bit of fluid there too. You're going to want to have something under there to catch it. So I know I'm already low enough on uh, coolant to take the top hose off. I'm going to go ahead and remove the top hose completely. I'm going to have to take my air cleaner off in order to access the, the back of the top hose. So as you can see, i got the top hose off already. I'm going to have to wait for the bottom hose because obviously the coolant will come out there instead of out the drain valve if I take it off right now. I'll go ahead and take the thermostat housing off since I'm going to replace the thermostat. The, new ther the reason I'm replacing the thermostat is uh, I was doing a little bit of reading and uh, they said that uh, there, there's a type of thermostat that flows better than the uh, than the regular, I guess, cheapest kind, and they're still not expensive, but they went ahead and bought that uh, stamped super stat, and the one I bought is four five three five eight, and it's supposed to it's it's it runs at the original engine temperature, so I'm not changing any of that up. But you see, you're going to lose a little bit of coolant whenever you uh, take the thermostat housing off. Just what, just what was in the housing below the neck. I try to get all this uh, sealant from the last job off here before I pull the thermostat out because I don't want any kind of trash getting in the engine in the new coolant system. But Clog up some of my new radiator a little bit. I don't want that. Like I said, I'm going to take a gasket scraper and remove the rest of the gasket, any kind of sealer that's on there. Remove the thermostat just like that. It's important to make sure the thermostat goes in in the right direction. That'll create real problems for you if you don't. So I got my new thermostat, I'm putting it in there, same way it came out. And of course you want to make sure it's really clean and dry to make the new gaskets seal better. And my intake is painted there, it probably would be best if it wasn't painted on that filling surface, but it is. So you can take a, a bead of silicone and run around the spot where the gasket's going to sit. My silicone is uh, my gasket sealer is kind of dried out uh, in the top so I had to cut the bottom of the tube off rather than go to the store and get some more right now. I just put the gasket on there and I'll put some more Another layer of silicone on the top side of the gasket, just around the part that needs to seal. You don't want to put a lot, a lot of this stuff because it'll make a big mess. It'll end up squishing out either on the inside or the outside. And you don't want it on the inside. my coolant did drain out so now I'll be able to take off the lower radiator hose. 
All right, so the other radiator hose goes in on the passenger side bottom, and it goes right up to the water pump there. It's not going to be very easy for me to get a video of this filming by myself, but I'm just going to, it comes off the same as the other, really easy to take off. Okay, I got the lower radiator hose off. Now I've got the uh, transmission lines to take off, and it's, uh, it's I've got a half inch, uh, tubing wrench. It works a lot better than a regular wrench. It keeps you from uh, destroying your tube fittings. And you're also going to want to keep put something under there to catch the transmission fluid. Which is what I did. If you've got a car that the tubes haven't been taken off ever, this can be a really hard thing to to get them to break loose without damaging them. But uh, I replaced mine and they're readily available on the internet. You can get them from Inline Tube is where I got most of my tubing from. And it makes life a lot better whenever it comes to uh, removing this stuff. Because those old ones get rusty and sometimes they won't come out at all where the, the fitting actually rusts to the tube. That's kind of the way mine were to start with. They, they were not able to be removed without destroying them. But they're not that hard to put on new if you buy new ones. Well, I didn't get a lot of fluid out of that side. So, let's see about this side. It'll probably be easier if I take the fan off first. But I didn't do it. But that's probably the best thing to do. Yeah, I'm going to move my bucket over to that side. Just in case I lose a lot when I pull it out. Well, I did not. It actually worked pretty good. Didn't lose very much at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, is take the fan off and get it out of my way. And it takes, uh, I believe, half inch. It's pretty difficult to get to this. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to take my radiator out first because the, the bolts to that fan are really, really aggravating to get off. Otherwise, because you have such a tight clearance here. Alright, so I'm going to take the radiator off first. And you got to be careful when you take your radiator off like this because you could hit the fan blades and damage your fans. This radiator is going in the trash so I'm not really worried about it. Uh, anyway, there's four bolts. Uh, two on each side on this radiator. I think on all of these radiators. And uh, they're half inch. They take a, I mean they take a half inch socket. Like I said on some cars it, it may be a little harder to get apart if your car's never been taken apart. Some of these bolts get rusty depending on where your car is from and how many miles and where it was kept. Uh, some of these bolts can be really hard to get out. Uh, mine, are, mine are easy, they've been taken out more than once. Pull it straight up like that, and it comes right out. And now what we've got left is the uh, this spacer that goes in front of the radiator. And on my car, I have aftermarket air conditioning uh, that's in front of here, so you got to be careful with that when you're taking this apart too, because the way it's installed, it's just a sandwich between the spacer and the radiator support. So it's going to be kind of uh, free hanging. Just be careful not to damage anything like that when you're doing this. But there's 
Also, uh, only four bolts holds this on, just like the radiator. We've got the same thing on the other side. Get it just lift straight up out of there just like the radiator. Alright, so now I'm gonna take the fan off. Now, we've got four bolts with half inch heads. And you gotta be kind of careful when you pick it up. It's got the spacer that goes in there also. But that's pretty much everything as far as removal. Everything else will be going back. It's really not a very complicated job to do if you've got some basic skills and tools. I've only I've been working on it about an hour disassembling it maybe. So now you can see the difference in the spacers. You get the thick spacer that was on the original cars that uh, just regular cars without air conditioning, without heavy duty cooling. And uh, only the cars with heavy duty cooling and air conditioning came with the fan shroud from what I understand. But you can see there's a pretty significant difference in thickness. So uh, by having the thinner spacer, it gives room for the fan shroud and the thicker radiator. And you can see the radiator here. This is my new radiator and my old radiator. Uh, the old radiator, you can see, kind of see the difference in, in the uh, fins. There's uh, the new ones, are, there's more fins in there. Like I said, from what I understand, that's the design. If you can look at US uh, Radiator's website and they'll tell you the difference in the design. But uh, this radiator is a little thicker too. And it's a four core radiator. I just wanted to go ahead and get the most heavy duty radiator that I could get. They're kind of pricey, but if it eliminates all the overheating problems, then it's worth it to me. All right, so now I'm gonna go back with the, the uh, spacer that, goes, that mounts to the radiator support. held on my four bolts just like the original. Next, I'm going to put the radiator on. That can be kind of hard to do by yourself. But I was able to do it.
hook up the transmission lines next uh, while they're easily accessible. So I'm going to have to bend them a little bit because the old radiator was closer to them. So you got to be really careful when you bend these. You don't want to kink them. Still got a little more manipulating to do on the other one. But it looks like it should reach without too much trouble. Got it connected now. It was a little bit of a pain, but I, I was able to get it. You always want to make sure you do these by hand. You don't want to start on the ranch. You can't turn them good, you're going to mess up the uh, fittings. And that can be very expensive if you mess up the fittings on the radiator. Snug, snug those down and as soon as you start running the car check them and if you need to tighten them a little more you can but you don't want to go too crazy with tightening those all right so now we, we're at the point of putting the uh, shroud and the fan and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this yet it's going to be trial and error to figure out which way is the best way to do it Alright, so it looks like I should be able to do it with the shroud first. Looks like I'm going to have to put these uh, fender nuts on here. Because the radiator didn't come with them. But I've got plenty of them from working on my car. I'll tell everybody this is my first time doing this, so it's very possible I could do something out of order and have to redo it. But we'll see. Alright, so I'm not going to tighten those up yet, just so I can make sure that I can put my fan in there right now. Alright, so I, I was able to get it in there, so that's a good thing. And just like before, we're putting these bolts on, it can be a pain.
right, so I'm looking at a problem right now. My fan is too low in the fan shroud, so there's a possibility I've got it all upside down. I'm going to take it off and see if that makes a difference. I don't know what the problem is here, but my fan, my shroud is uh, not lined up with the engine, not lined up with the fan, so I'm going to have to lower the shroud a little bit. I mean, it's not very much, but I don't know, it's possible that my parts are not what they're supposed to be. I bought, like I said, I bought them from individuals. But I think I can make some adjustments with the way it mounts on here and just lower it a little bit. I think that'll take care of my problem. All right, so I figured out that my uh, fan was almost dragging on the bottom of the shroud. So I can't tell you if it's the radiator or the uh, fan shroud or what. I'm, I imagine the radiator. It's a new radiator from uh, U.S. Radiators. But I had to I had to drill a set of holes in this bracket so I could mount the shroud about an inch lower. Like I said, I don't have original parts to work with, so I can't tell you which one's off. But from the looks of things, I think it would be the radiator bracket. But I can't I can't put the blame on them 100%. But it's a pretty easy modification that I could make to be able to do it. Just had to drill the holes an inch lower, so now I should be able to put my shroud on and my fan blades without any problem. Looks like the fan's gonna line up a lot better now. Plenty of clearance around here. Got the bolts in, got it tight. Right now I've got to put my radiator hoses back on. We'll start with the new upper.
when I ordered these, I ordered the ones for cars with air conditioning. It fits perfect. Just gonna fill it back up with antifreeze. temperature gauge. I don't have, the gauge that comes on this car doesn't have numbers on it. So, all I got to go by is where it's at. Right now it's cooled back off for a little bit. But, uh, before I did this, mine would sometimes get up near the high. So I'm hoping that is eliminated with this. So I wanted to put all this uh, this video together as promised. Uh, I've got more videos that are going to be coming soon also. I'm going to be converting this car over to electronic ignition. I'm also going to be converting the car over to using the spin-on oil filter. And I'm, I'm going to also make a video on uh, setting the timing, the, both the initial timing and the advance timing so if subscribe and you'll be able to see all these videos as they come out in the future and i've got others that i've got in the works also thank you very much